Hello and welcome to this video and in it I'm basically going to show how to do custom text in Scratch for variable things. So I've already made some in this project as you can see there's these two different variations of it. So if I go here I can change what text is being displayed and these are just two different methods. Um, also as you can see I don't have the text perfectly aligned but that would be something that would be fairly easy to do. So, yeah, I've used this stuff pretty similar to this in all of my projects where, like in my project Fog Platformer, I have a timer using this. Um, so, yeah, I'm basically just going to be showing how to do this. Now, the first thing you need to do is probably the most tedious step. Basically, the <laughs> you need to have a costume for every single possible character you want. This one I'm using right now has um, a ton of symbols and all the letters and numbers but it doesn't have capital letters right now and if you don't want to do this I am going to in the description link a project that has just all of like these costumes as well as capital letters added in but if you do want to do it on your own like if you want a different font or something you just need to label each one the same thing as it is. So whatever symbol it is, you just put that as its name. Or if you want to use a symbol that doesn't actually exist in a font, you could just, if I want a custom symbol, I could just take the forward slash and then just draw whatever I want that to represent. And now in this, whenever I put a forward slash, it will just put whatever I drew. Another thing is that depending on how you do it, you want to either have all of the text either centered or have their left side or their right side, either side, all on the same thing. So the way I have it right now is so that the left side of all the letters line up with the center of the thing. Um, and I'll explain why I did this later instead of centering them. So I'm going to show two separate methods of how to do this, however, they're almost identical, there's only a few slight differences. Um, one of them is using clones in Scratch, which is the main way to do this. However, for some projects you might not want to do this, because Scratch actually has a limit to clones, I believe it's like around 200 I think. And so if you want to put text in a project that already has a lot of clones, then this won't really work that well. However, for probably like almost any project, this will work perfectly fine. The other method that I have is using stamp, which is basically, it's part of the pen set of blocks, and it basically draws the sprite onto the screen on the pen layer. However, there are a few problems with this, the main one being that it gets super pixelated. So yeah, that might not be the best thing, however, this doesn't require any clones at all. So anyways, I'm gonna show how to do the clone text, and then I'm going to show how to modify it to make the stamp text. So obviously the first thing is a win flag clicked. And basically what you want to do is get a repeat loop, and a go to here, a change x by, or if you're doing the text vertically, a change y by, and then a create clone. Now, basically this first one, is basically where you want the text to be on your screen. It's normally going to be where the farthest left character is, however you can modify the code to make it farthest right or the top or bottom character if you're doing vertically. But I'm just going to show how to do this with left to the right. And then I'm just going to put it up a little bit and so right now there's not actually anything you can see. I also just remembered that I need to add all of the sprites in so I'm going to do that. So as you can see now that I have all of my sprites in, when I click the flag, it will just create a bunch of whatever character I have selected in the costume. Now the next thing is this, which um, basically is, this is just however much distance you want between each letter. The next thing you want to do is create a character number variable, you can call this whatever you want, but basically this tells the clones which character in the text they are assigned to. So basically... I just remembered I did this wrong. I do this every time. When you create the character number, make sure to click for this sprite only as that will make it so that each clone will see 
the character number as a separate variable instead of all of them referring to the sprites version of it they will each clone will have their own version of this variable so if you just do this then each one of these clones will have their own number also just at the start you have to put a hide there right now it's going to make everything invisible but i'll fix that later so when they start as a clone First of all, there's just going to be a forever loop, or if you want them to eventually go away, you could do a repeat and tell or something, but for this, I'm just going to use a forever loop. Then switch costume to letter one of this, and then I already have a text variable, but this is just going to be whatever variable you want this to show. So if you just are using it as like a fancy version of the scratches built in variable system, then you could do that. But for this, I just have its own variable. Then for letter. I'm going to put character number, and this will make it so that each one will go to its own thing. So if I set text to this, then they'll each be assigned to something different. However, as you can see, they aren't currently appearing, which is because I need to make it so that these will actually revert back to being shown. And as you can see, now when I put text in, it'll show the text. However, <laughs> There's a bit of a problem, which is that all of these letters over here just stay there even though the text variable doesn't have them. And that's because right now, if their letter is after the end of the word, it'll just keep to whatever they've previously been on. So in order to fix this, I need to say if character number is greater than length of text, which means that within this, it'll go here if it is after the end of the text, and it'll go here if it isn't. So I put my sh the show block I had previously in here, and the hide block here, and now as you can see, it will be the same length as whatever the text I have. However, if you go over, as you can see, it gets cut off, which is what this number over here is for, so if you want it to be able to go longer, then you can put like 20 here, and now it can show 20 characters. So if you just want basic text, this will work. You don't really need anything fancy if you just want to show something. However, if you want to be fancy, you definitely can. So now what I'm going to show is basically, if I look at my other text, as you can see, okay, this isn't a good example. In this, as you can see, when there's an I, there's less space for the I because it's smaller than when there's like an M. So the M takes up more space. Whereas here, all of the H's and the I's have like a big gap after them. So I'm going to show how to fix this if you want it to have something like this. Also, if you don't want to fix this, then I would recommend to have your costumes centered fully as it will make it so that the gaps are a little neater. So the first thing you want to do when you are making it like a line is to create a giant list that looks something like this. Now. Basically what this does is it's just like an index of all of the lengths of the characters. So each one of these numbers corresponds to one of the characters and is roughly the size of that character. Most of them as you can see are ones, but there's a bunch that I've changed slightly to just make it look nicer. And then of course there's stuff like the .5s and the 1.5s which are dramatically changed. And I'm also going to include this in the project in my description. So. If you don't want to make this on your own, then I have it. Although this isn't perfect, there's still some inconsistencies here and there, but it looks pretty good for the most part. So anyways, back here, what you want to do is just remove these two movement blocks and then move this one to here. And as you can see, now they all just go on top of each other. But then what you need to do is do repeat and then it's number minus one. And for now, I'm just gonna say change x by 20. And as you can see, this kind of breaks everything, which can actually be fixed really easily. So you just need to create a new block. I'm gonna call it render, because that's basically what it's doing. And then check this run without screen refresh block. And take this out and put it under render, and then just, and then just put the render block in the forever loop. Basically what this does is it makes it so that whatever is within this block will all be executed at once. So instead of doing this over time, it'll do all of it within like one frame, which makes it so that it doesn't do what it was doing before. It'll always be at the final state of this frame. 
Now, as you can see, this doesn't actually change anything. This is still very, you know, this the same. <laughs> but I'll show how to fix. First, you need to create an extra variable. I'm just gonna call it count, and make sure you have the for the sprite only box checked once again. Now, what count does is I'm gonna put it before here, and then I'm gonna say change count by one at the start of here, which acts pretty much the same as the character number. However, in this situation, what it's going to be doing is it's going to be looking at the characters before it, which is what count represents, and then finding what their lengths are and moving by that. So the next thing I'm going to do is take this switch costume block, you can just right click, duplicate, drag it, and remove this, and then replace character number with count. Now it seems kind of counterproductive to be switching the costume again, but that's because Scratch has actually like a really useful built-in thing where you can take the costume number which allows me to basically easily convert between whatever letter, symbol, number you have and convert it into what number it is in the costume list. So if you get like X for example, it'll switch to the X costume, which is num costume number 34. So this is just a really simple way to convert between the two without having to make an extra list. Because otherwise I would have to create like one or two more giant lists of stuff and this is just way better. So what I'm actually going to be doing with the costume number is in the change X, it's basically going to look through the list. So it's item costume number of character sizes or whatever the list is called. And then multiply that by whatever you want like your base distance to be. So I'll just say 15. And now if I put M's and then like some other characters of various lengths, as you can see, there's bigger gaps for the M's than there are for the I's, and so it's pretty good. And yeah, this is pretty much everything you need. So like, creating text is really simple. Or, I guess some of the stuff in here is somewhat complex, but it's pretty small code, all things considered. Anyways, next I'm going to show how to create this into stamp, which basically makes it so you don't need clones anymore. So if you don't care about that, you can just stop watching here. But basically what I'm going to do first is take this, take this forever loop and move it here, then put this here and move this back into the render and then just put render here. Next I just need to remove that and replace this with an I meant with a stamp block and then put erase all up here and <laughs> yeah that's pretty much that so yeah this is all, as you can see almost the exact same code also down here this looks a little clunky because there's an empty part so if you don't want that empty bit you can just grab a not and an if then take this same thing, put it here, and then put the stamp in here. And that'll be the exact same. So yeah, that's how to do it in stamp, which is pretty much the exact same. Also, you probably would want an erase all. Now this could be good for certain things. However, if you have other pen things going on, it could get in the way. And this, since it's on the pen layer, will automatically be lower than all other sprites. That's just a couple different ways to make text in Scratch. So thanks for watching and hopefully this video was helpful. Remember the costumes and list I used are both in the description. So thank you and goodbye.